Welcome back, guys. I'm Zell, and I'm cleaning the bed on our little Prusa Mini here. And I generally do it with IPA. I'm not sure what Prusa suggests. I'm probably doing it wrong. And that's okay, because it seems to work pretty good. I do know that don't do like I did with the MK3, and I used acetone on it and a lot, kind of like from the beginning. And uh, that bed does not stick real well anymore. So don't use the acetones. All right, so I have just reset the Penda probe on this thing. So we need to do a first layer cow. And we're going to get into that. And the first layer cow will actually go through all of the filament loading that we're about to do. But I want to do the filament loading with you because it is a little different on the Prusa Mini. So, try to get over here where we can see the filament and the screen. Come on, Osmo. Okay. So, I have the filament right here. And it's, see, right there. The end of the filament. Before we go to heat anything, and you don't have to do this, it's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and feed that all the way in as far as I can get it to go. And I do mean as far as I can get it to go, especially with that one because I didn't clip the head off of it. So there's a little bump at the end that we hope that the extruder will pick up. Then I'm going to go to filament right there. Uh, click on filament. We're going to go to load filament. And then this is a PLA Pro from... Uh, overture and it really doesn't need that much temperature but we're going to click the PLA anyhow because it'll be fine at 215. Now from there everything should be okay. We're going to warm up and we saw our z-axis lifted a little bit that's so that we can see underneath it. I wish more printers did that kind of stuff but it does but they don't for whatever reason. And now we wait for the temperature. And there's no re real reason to preheat the Prusa Mini because this dude's little bitty bed and hot end get up to temperature rather quickly. I haven't timed them because they haven't bothered me. It's not been like, oh, hey, this is annoying. So I need to find out how slow it is and figure out how to speed it up because it just hasn't been a problem. See, we're already, on, we're at what, almost 200 right now. And we'll be, yeah, 207. Okay, now this is how I do this. I get a hold of it and I hit continue and I failed. And this is the minor problem with this, and I'll show you why I failed. You see that little bump there? It's hard to see, but it's there, right there, on the end of that little piece of filament. That is what's giving us our problem. So, I'm going to clip that off. And we're going to tell if the color is correct, because if we don't, it'll try to purge more. And we're going to go, and we're going to feed this back in again. Now that it's clipped off clean, and we're also going to hold it just like this with just a little bit of pressure on it. Go back to filament, load filament, PLA. And since it's already warm, we can just hit continue. Uh -huh. And I missed again. Oh, now I caught it. So I don't know what was up with that, but it caught it on the second time. But as you can see, oh, well, you can't see. Let me bring you up here. As you can see, the filament is just now getting down in there and it says it's purging. And we can tell them the color is not correct, and it will continue to purge. 
and I'll do that again even if we do make it down there. That way you can see that screen. And it didn't make it down there. And we can go to Purge Filament. And click the Purge Lit Up. And there we go, we finally have filament coming out of there. Uh, and you know, I would redo this video and do it just the way Prusa intended. However, we can tell it done now. However, getting filament, especially, well, in and out of this machine, is not as easy as it should be. But there you go, we finally have filament in there, and now we're going to go over and do our first layer cow. Now, first thing to do with the first layer cow, and we already did this, I know, but you want to make sure that that bed is completely clean, doesn't have any hand marks on it, any other oils. Now, this one's got some marks in the middle of it from uh, some TPU. Strangely, those TPU marks will heal themselves over a day or so. It's really weird. Uh, I guess that's what PEI is supposed to do. But we will go here and go down to calibration and go to Z offset, or not Z offset, um, first layer cal. I'm worried about that Z offset. To calibrate with currently loaded filament, press next. To load a filament, press load. To change filament, press unload. So we could have loaded or unloaded the filament here. I did it outside of this because of some of the issues I've had getting filament in and out of it. And I didn't want to be locked up in the first layer cowl and everything else. So we're going to click next. And then it's going to ask you what kind of filament you've got. And we're going to click PLA. Now let's... It says, now let's uh, calibrate the distance between the tip of the nozzle and the print sheet. And this is important, very, right here. First layer cal, do you want to use the current value of minus 0.663 or the default value? It says the default value is recommended. And if you have changed anything with the printer, you are going to want to go to the default value. And uh, the reason for this is... I just messed with the Minda probe in the previous video, and I'm pretty sure that the Minda probe is a little closer now, so that's going to mess with my uh, offset, this number here. We don't want to run that nozzle into that PEI sheet, so we're going to do what it says and click no to use the default value. And uh, that's what you're going to want to do unless you know that it's okay not to. So we're going to click no. And then in the next step, we're going to use the knob to adjust the nozzle height. And this happens live. And our job is to get this stuff to stick without it uh, being flattened. You want it to have a little bit of lift to it, a little bit of curvature to it. If you go over to some of Chep's videos on the Ender 3, uh, there's some really good information there. Uh, I believe that Teaching Tech does some, and Joe does some too over at 3D Maker Noob. And, you know, they've got pictures and, vi and uh, graphics and stuff to show you. The way I look at it, you just want it to get it low enough that it sticks and stays stuck whenever you run your finger over it. However, it doesn't get flattened. You don't want it completely flat. So we're going to click next and move the camera over where you can, oh, it went high on me, where you can see what, I, what we're doing here. And first thing, I want to get that extra off of there. And then it's going to go through its mesh bed leveling routine. And run our prime line. I can already tell from the prime line that we are way too high. So, it's going to let us start going here. And, yeah, see, we can just push that stuff off there. So, 
time to start cranking over here. That's moving a little thing to the left, and uh, we're getting closer. I'm cranking it so fast I can hear the stepper motor over there moving. But I know I couldn't have moved the Penda probe, or Minda, excuse me, probe too far. How are we doing there? Just getting there. Let's see what that does. Uh oh, sounds like we're getting pretty good at around 5.30. Minus 5.30, let's see how the corner went. Oh, corner's pretty good on this side. I have to check the corner on the other side. So, oh, corner on that side still a little. So, go 550 minus 550 and see what happens. You know, and this is the coolest part right here. It's going to print us out a little, um, I'll show you here in just a minute, but it's a little nicely printed like you would do with your bottom layer on something. And uh, let you really see how everything looks. And it's actually looking pretty good. I can't believe that that's almost an entire tenth different. That's uh, pretty amazing. All right, so that's what it looks like. And I do want to show you this one here. Right there. And it's still just a little high. So, see if we can pull that out one at a time. So here's what Prusa says over here on the screen. You want to repeat the last step and readjust the distance. And yes, we do. Then it says clean the steel sheet. So I'm gonna clean the steel sheet again. You go through a lot of alcohol when you do this 3D printing stuff. And unfortunately, it's not the kind that does anything for you physically. Except clean you up if you need it. And you get real cheap printers, you end up with the other kind of alcohol and maybe consuming a lot of that. But we're going to go next. And this time, we want to keep the last value. Because we know what's going on, right? So... Do you want to use the last set value? Yes. All right, so it cooled itself down. It's going to have to heat up again. And I'm going to leave the thing over here this time. That way you can see what I'm doing with the Z height. All right, here we go. We're going to do our mesh bed level. All right, it's printing our priming strip. That looks a lot better, but I still don't think we're quite low enough. So we're gonna move this to the left and we're gonna be a little more careful now. We're, no, we're in no danger of hitting the PEI sheet yet, but we're still just a little loose. Really good there, so let's try minus 590. I think we may have found it. We'll have to wait and see what happens on that little strip on the end. And I will point the camera, I'll try to get the camera pointed at it a little better so you guys can see what I'm talking about there. In fact, we'll just do that.
All right, so get you guys down here where you can see that if we can focus on it. All right, so the camera is going to fight with me and not want to focus on it. But that's looking pretty good. I may end up going just a little bit lower, but uh, I kind of doubt it. I think that that is going to be really good. So guys, that takes care of, and uh, okay, so over here it asks if we want to do it again. And this time we say no. Wizard says okay. Right there is our new Z offset. And we'll get rid of our filament up here. I think we're in good shape. So, I say, why don't we print a little rocket? Clock Spring designed this super neat little rocket. And now that we have our Minda probe set, we have our everything all set up. We can print his little rocket. So we'll go to the print menu. We have all kinds of other things in here. There it is. All right, I'm gonna set up, I'm gonna use the same camera for the hyperlapse. So you guys have a great day and enjoy the hyperlapse of the awesome rocket by uh, Clockspring over on My Mini Factory. I'll have a link down in the description. And we're doing this at like 50%, guys, so it's going to be tiny and cool. Perfect for the Mini.